What's up guys, another Kane Loves Cali NBA video, and let's talk about the NBA story of Draymond Green. He was a second round pick who was said by scouts that he was too small to play power forward and too slow to play small forward. Now he's turned into one of the best all around forwards in the league. Let's talk about how Draymond Green went from an overlooked second round pick to becoming a multiple defensive player of the year candidate. Draymond Green grew up in Saginaw, Michigan with his two brothers and three sisters. His older brother Dorian played college basketball for Nebraska Omaha from 2009 to 2011. He played high school basketball for the Saginaw High School Trojans. His first year of varsity basketball was as a sophomore and he averaged 12 points per game. Draymond would tell his high school teachers, coaches, and friends that he was going to make it to the NBA and it didn't seem crazy to them because he was a natural leader and was the hardest working guy on the team. After working on his game all spring and summer, he increased his scoring and rebounding averages by a lot in his junior basketball season. Draymond averaged 25 points, 13 rebounds, 3 assists, and 3 steals per game. Saginaw High School only lost one game that year and they won the state championship. That junior year put him on the national radar and lots of college teams were looking to offer him scholarships. Green verbally committed to Kentucky, but after months and months of arguments with his mom, he decided on Michigan State before the start of his senior basketball season. She did not think Draymond was a good fit at Kentucky and wanted him to go somewhere else. His senior year was capped off with another Saginaw High School State Basketball Championship. His high school only lost one game that year and Draymond averaged 20 points, 13 rebounds, and 2 blocks. Really random, but he was the high school's homecoming king that year. Into his freshman year at Michigan State, he was ranked the number 36 player by ESPN and the number 13 power forward. In his freshman year as a Michigan State Spartan, he came off the bench behind Raymar Morgan. He only averaged 3 points per game, but once the NCAA tournament came around, Draymond saw more playing time and increased his averages to 8 points and 5 rebounds. The Spartans went 26-6 that year, the number 2 seed in the NCAA tournament, and they lost in the championship to North Carolina 89-72. It's his sophomore season, and now Draymond is the 6th man. Michigan State has another very good year. They went 28-9 and, and got to the Final Four, but lose against Gordon Hayward, Brad Stevens, and Butler, 52-50. On one of the last plays of the game, Draymond posted up Hayward and tried to muscle a layup over him in what looked like a foul, but no foul was called. Draymond called it the most important play of his college career, and he still has a grudge against Hayward and thinks about that play every time he plays against Hayward. Draymond had a really good individual sophomore year, though. Averaging 9 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, and he won Big Ten 6th Man of the Year. It's his junior season and Draymond is officially a starter. He increases his scoring averages up to 12 points and 8 rebounds, but Michigan State loses in the first round against UCLA as the 10th seed. In his senior year, Draymond really got busy and started consistently showing off his all-around offense and defensive skills that he's done on the Warriors the past three years. He won Big Ten Player of the Year and averaged 16 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 assists. Michigan State was the first seed in the NCAA tournament, but lost in the Sweet 16 at Louisville. Draymond finished his Michigan State career with three NCAA tournament triple-doubles and became the third player in history to have more than two triple-doubles in their NCAA tournament career. The other two players? Oscar Robertson and Magic Johnson. Draymond's college career was very accomplished and he would then declare for the NBA draft. Going into the draft, a lot of teams weren't sure what to make of Draymond. He was too small to play down low, but not fast and athletic enough to be an NBA starting wing. His NBA comparisons were Jared Dudley, a veteran three-point specialist, and Luke Herringody, an undersized power forward who played at Notre Dame and played three seasons in the NBA. He was a 6 foot 7, 240 pound power forward with a below average jump shot, but he did measure in with a 7 foot 1 wingspan, so he was able to make blocks and reach for steals just outside of his area. Funny story on draft night, lots of teams passed up on Draymond, but one in particular, Cavs owner Dan Gilbert got a call from the Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo telling him that the Cavs should draft Draymond with one of their second round picks. Gilbert did tell the Cavs front office that the Michigan State coach called him and said to take Draymond, but they didn't take him. The Cavs ended up shipping those two picks away to the Dallas Mavericks. The Cavs had pick number 33 and 34, and with the 35th pick of the NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Draymond Green. Coach Tom Izzo really loved his intangibles and his jack-of-all-trades skill set, 
and said if you combined Udonis Haslam and Shane Battier, you would get Draymond Green, which at the time of the draft was a really good comparison. Too small to play power forward, not athletic and fast enough to play small forward, getting dropped down to the second round after he was supposed to be a late first round selection, Draymond would use those doubters to fuel and drive his NBA career. He actually knows every single player off the top of his head who was drafted ahead of him. Number six, Damian Lillard, seven, HB, 31, Jeff Taylor, 32, Thomas Sadoronski, 33, Bernard James, 34, Jay Crawford. He only played about 13 minutes per game in his rookie season, only averaging two points per game, and he struggled to get his shot going. Draymond was very limited offensively. He was playing behind David Lee and Carl Landry. But then the playoffs come and David Lee gets injured and is out for the Nuggets series and most of the Spurs series. It's next man up and Draymond is one of the first guys off the bench and was a key contributor to the Warriors beating the Nuggets in the first round of the 2013 playoffs. He scored 16 points and grabbed 10 rebounds in the game six closeout win versus the Nuggets. His second season is here and he would lose 20 pounds going down to 230. He would become more agile on defense and quicker exploding to the rim. He went up to playing 21 minutes per game after only averaging 13 in his rookie year and he started showing off more of his all around forward skills. He was the first guy off the bench and Draymond went up to averaging a steal and almost a block per game. The Warriors lost in seven games to the Clippers in the first round. It didn't help that Bogut got injured that series, but at the time, Curry, Thompson, Draymond, and the Warriors showed that they were about to be one or two seasons away from becoming serious contenders. His third year is here, Steve Kerr is the new coach, and Draymond is inserted into the starting lineup. He added that playmaking and defensive versatility that the Warriors lineup never got with David Lee and the team became a lot better because of it. Draymond upped his scoring total to 11 points per game and got the reputation as one of the league's best all-around defenders. He was grabbing 8 rebounds a night and up to 3 assists a night. The Warriors won 67 games and he was selected All-NBA Defensive First Team and was runner-up for Defensive Player of the Year. The Warriors were down 2-1 against the Grizzlies in the Western Semifinals. But other than that, they cruised through the West playoffs and took on the Cavs in the 2015 Finals where Draymond had a triple-double in the Game 6 win. He was told he was too small to play power forward in the NBA. Now in the NBA Finals, he's filling in for the injured Andrew Bogut at center and doing all the dirty work at 6'7". That summer, Draymond signs a new contract and becomes even better in the 2015-2016 year. He's averaging 14 points, shooting 38% at the three-point line, 49% from the field, upping his assist total to seven dimes per game. He's named to second team all NBA, first all defense again, and the Warriors look unbeatable after winning 73 games. They got past Houston and Portland in five games, and now they're playing the Thunder for the Western Conference Championship, but it's not looking too good for the Warriors as they are down 3-1. The famous kick that Draymond landed on Steven Adams was one of the bigger stories of that year's playoffs. He caught a lot of heat for his kicking and it soon caught up to him. Instead of Durant versus LeBron part two, the Warriors ended up coming back from that deficit to get to the finals versus Cleveland. During game four, the Warriors are up 10 with two minutes left and about to be up three to one in what looks like another Warriors championship. They're about to go back to back. Then the Draymond Green and LeBron fight happens. Words are exchanged. They had to be separated. Two days later, Draymond is suspended for game five, which fuels the Cavs comeback to win the title. In Game 7, on a night Curry and Thompson were shooting poorly, Draymond had an amazing game, 32 points and 15 rebounds, but it wasn't enough. Draymond felt he let his teammates down and said that they would have won the title if he was out there on the court on Game 5. In 2017, his new superstar forward Durant is on the team. His numbers went down a bit, but he was selected to a second All-Star game and did his usual all-around dirty work for the Warriors. We're about to start Game 1 of the NBA Finals, and it's just crazy to look back at his development from when he was a rookie. He is the guy who sets the tone with his defense and communication for the 67 win Warriors team. Even his head coach at Michigan State, Tom Izzo, had no idea Draymond would become this high level of a player. Izzo said, I knew he had a high basketball IQ. I didn't know it was an off the charts one. And then he started working harder and he had a couple of intangibles that those analytic guys can't measure. He's tougher than nails. Pretty interesting story when you look back at how he was evaluated in the draft to what we see him doing now as the do it all power forward who can play center at six foot seven. Now he's been a defensive player of the year candidate for three seasons and one of the best all around forwards in the league. If you made it this far to the video, I appreciate it. That's it for me, the Draymond Green story. What'd you think about it? We're almost at 13,000 subs. With the finals about to hit game one, I thought this was a good time to drop this, so I'll see you guys in my next video.